Hey crafters, it is high time we had another upcycle from Free Project. You guys know I love taking items that I've maybe thrifted or been given or maybe even came from my closet and transforming those garments into new to me pieces that maybe fit me and my lifestyle and my artistic preferences a little bit better. One example is the shirt I'm wearing today. Uh, one of my neighbors was giving this away. It used to be white. It had some staining. We did a little upcycling on it and now it's been one of my wardrobe favorites. So let's see if we can turn today's pieces into some upcycled favorites as well. All three of the garments I'm working with today were being given away by some of my neighbors and I thought I could probably turn them into something that works a little better for me. I'm also hoping that one of these pieces will fit my sister. So I have a little added challenge of turning that into a garment that she would like as well. And I will show you the garments we're working with. I'll talk you through the process, the supplies, see what you think. Do you get inspired to try a little upcycling magic of your own? Come along on the adventure today. I'll show you the garments we're working with and let's get upcycling. Well, I love me a good flowy boho dress and I was really excited to find this one being given away in my neighborhood. It's from a uh, brand from Target. Let's double check, see if I can remember. It is rayon, 100% rayon, okay, a new day from Target. It's rayon. It's definitely a really lightweight, pretty sheer material. Fun floral print. Foofy poofy skirt, we love it. And it's fun, it's just, it's just really fun. Love a good flowy dress. It doesn't have a ton of issues, but for me, it could definitely use a little love. This high neck, let's, sorry, let's turn around a little and see. So it's kind of got this almost like baby doll waistline and then a really high neck with some gathering. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's got a bunch of discoloring around this high neck and I've, I've stain treated it and washed it a couple times and that's not going anywhere. I think it's because this neck is so high. I mean, you just can't help but get makeup on it. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, so that's there. So I'm thinking, maybe I could tie dye this. I think I wanna dye this. There's one other change I wanna make. Let me turn the garment around and show you the back. Okay, turn the dress over. I'm sorry it's really wrinkly. <laughs> but, um, so the back of the dress, very similar to the front. And like the skirt and the waistband. The high neck would fasten like this. You want the button in the back. There's no, there's no darts or anything in the front. Um, the back of the bodice is very similar to the front, except that it has a seam going down the middle right there, and it has this neckline. Honestly, I think I'm going to wear the dress backwards. Yeah, like, what if I use this as, like, a V-neck? Might have to wear a tank under it, but then that would kind of eliminate this problem of this really high neck, which for me, I have a tough time wearing those because I'm like, Heh. don't want to choke. But I could, you know, possibly, maybe I could open up this seam and remove this little guy. I mean, I could cut it off, but it'd be nice to take that off entirely. And of course, take off the button and then use that as a V-neck I've tried it on, and I think it works. Like, it's it's okay. I'm going to play with that idea. I mean, I, I may change my mind, but that's kind of where I'm going with this to make it more wearable for me. We'll see. We like playing with things. 
I'm like trying things out. And we don't like feeling choked by the neckline of a dress, so there you go. Hey, uh, let me show you my uh, color choice for this guy. Okay, so I want to keep this purplish, but I do need to turn it a little darker. I want to kind of cover up some of that staining, so... Yes, got to use one of my new favorite RIT dyes. Man, I've tried this Hyacinth once before, and it's a really nice, almost like purplish periwinkle color. It's not like a super dark color. It's not like as dark as their purple or their lilac. I feel like this guy's a little lighter. But just a really pretty color. And I feel like it will over dye nicely and turn it, you know, kind of a darker purplish, but not make it so dark that the pattern will disappear. At least that's what I'm hoping. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to be following package directions as usual with our RIT dye. We'll be heading over to my kitchen laboratory. Heating up a whole bunch of water. I'll probably be doing this guy in the sink. We'll read the package. I may be using a little bit of salt with this guy. I can't remember if Rayon needs salt. We'll check. <laughs> we'll put the garment in. I think I'm just going to put the whole garment in without tying it up, really. I think I'm just going to get it wet and put the whole garment in. I'll have to stir it a lot to make sure that all of these ruffles of fabric get as evenly dyed as possible. That'll probably be a bit of a challenge to get it all as even as possible, but I think that's the look we'll go for with this guy. And then of course, once we've done our time in the dye, we'll take it out, pop it in, a little color fixative, try to help lock everything in. Of course, following directions on this guy, I think they have you put this Put the garment in some water with this for about 20 minutes plus. Yep. We'll check. And, uh, yeah. Then we wash out and launder the garment. And we'll see. Can we make it even more wearable? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, guys. As always, I've been prepping some of my work surfaces just to try to protect surfaces as much as we can we're gonna be working here in the sink got a bunch of supplies all ready to go over here love to have some cleaning supplies ready lots of paper towel some old towels got our dye got some fixative we'll be using that right after the garments come out of the dye i'm also gonna need a little bit of dish soap and about a cup of salt as per the bottle directions. So, we got our stuff. We're going to fill up the sink with some hot water. And get to dying. Okay guys, it's been between 15 and 20 minutes, and oh my gosh, look how dark this is. Cool color, right? I 
would have taken it out a little bit earlier, but I noticed that there were some spots that were noticeably lighter than others, so I kept it in and kept storing it. That seems to be really important. Got to keep it moving a lot in the bath. I also didn't put other garments in with the dress just because there's so much, so much dress and I wanted it to be able to move as freely as possible to hopefully make it not too patchy. I'm going to rinse this out maybe a little bit, just kind of, well, probably more just like squish out the dye, squish out any extra. And then I'm going to refill the sink with more hot water, add some fixative. I think it suggests letting it sit there for about 20 minutes in the fixative. And then launder the garment. Honestly, I think I'll just wash this out in some cold water in the sink and let it drip dry. And I'll show you what she looks like all cleaned up. Uh, well guys, I got this in the dye fixative and I was washing it out and every time I look at it, I go, wow, that, that, is that patchy? That's really patchy. <sighs> There's one really patchy spot that's lighter and the rest is darker. Can you see this? Okay. Not on camera. It's definitely, th <sighs> I thought it might just be the light or whatever, but no. It's actually one shoulder of the top of the dress is lighter and everything else is darker. Yeah, it's like, it, it's like that sleeve is, is lighter too. Like the top is lighter and then uh, the rest is darker. <sighs> Maybe it's because this fabric is so lightweight that it kind of bunched up in the dye and I didn't stir it enough. Thankfully, I've got some more dye. And I've got my kitchen sink available. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna heat up a little more water, add a little more dye, put this back in maybe for like 10 more minutes or so, stir it around a bunch and see if we can fix this problem because I don't think it's going to get better when this is dry because it looks like it's just one part of the dress that's like this. <sighs> okay, take two. I'll show you when it's better. Oh my gosh! Talk about a color transformation! Holy moly! Our dress is now very purple! Whoa! I'm so glad that the pattern still shows up. But I am actually really enjoying this super dark purple. I was going for a lighter purple. But you know what? Those stains can't be seen anymore. <laughs> It is still a little bit patchy. I know on the camera the, the light's kind of odd, so it looks super patchy here on the screen, but it, it's a little patchy up close. I think I needed to stir this thing more. I was surprised that a fabric this lightweight um, would have a hard time getting even dye distribution, but, well, I just learned a lot of stuff. <laughs> if you're dyeing a dress, stir it a lot. Note to self. Okay. And always have extra dye in case you gotta dye it twice. <laughs> Accidental discovery. All right. Well, I'm not mad about this dress. It's a little different than I thought it was going to be, but I'm really glad it worked. I'm glad I had extra dye uh, to help cover up some of the patchiness. And I think I'm actually going to really enjoy wearing this. I may actually end up just keeping the button and button loop at the neck. I don't know. I mean, I, I might take it off later. I don't know. I, I actually don't mind it. I think it's kind of cool. Shows it's a v-neck that you could close if you wanted to. Yeah. I don't know. But I think this is going to be a really fun dress to wear. It should be super comfy. And it should be a, just a really fun color. So, 
Yay! Yay dress! Can't wait to wear this one. Well, you guys, I was excited to find this shirt being given away in my area. It is cotton. It's got some really cute embroidery. It's definitely like a pretty lightweight material. It does have a little bit of staining. I don't know if you can see on camera, but um, it's kind of some stuff going on over here. It kind of feels like something got like spilled on it a little bit. Of course, I've washed it. I, I stain treated it. But it still wasn't going away. So you know what that means. Time for a little dye. Woohoo! And I tried it on, I think. Oops, sorry. See if we can focus here. Oop. I think this would fit my sister really nicely. Hmm. Okay. What color should it become? I'm kind of thinking an overall color like you know not tying it up with rubber bands not making patterns just dyeing it one color and then kind of letting the embroidery and the detailing kind of shine i'm not sure if the embroidery thread will dye the same as the rest of the shirt i kind of hope it doesn't because that would be really cool to have like some contrast i have to uh <clears throat> i'm texting my sister i want to see what color she wants this to be. Uh, let me check my text messages and I'll get back to you. Okay, so here are the colors that I have so far. Okay, of course, this is the color that I'm dyeing that lavender dress. Very awesome. This is the color I used on that lace top that I did for a recent upcycle from free video. Oh my gosh, this color is on fire. I love it. It's really bright and crazy, but I love it. I used this color on my sweatshirt and jogger pants that I did recently, and I've been loving this pink. I, I'm not generally into pink, but I feel like this might be my pink season because I've been enjoying this. By the way, I will link to those other projects because, hello, super fun. Then you can also see how these colors turn out. I used the petal pink when I dyed my linen blend dress that I ended up wearing to my cousin's baby shower tea party, it ended up being a really pretty cool tone pastel pink. So I love all of these, honestly. And I just heard back from my sister. She's thinking possibly the petal pink. Although I am heading to the craft store this afternoon and she's open to a blue option as well. So I guess I'll have to see what I find and just see what she decides on. But I think this would be really pretty. Blue would be really pretty. Honestly, honestly, just, just about anything would be really cool with this. Yay. I can't wait to transform this. Woo. Okay. Pink has won. Excellent. Okay, we're just gonna be heading to the kitchen. We're gonna be following package directions. I gotta do this in my sink. I'm gonna use hot water. I'm gonna use probably a cup of salt because I guess that helps with cotton. A little bit of dish soap. Pour in some dye. I don't want the dye to be too dark, but that's actually kind of the beauty of this dye color. It's kind of a light color. So that's nice. And then we'll put it in there and maybe leave it in for, I don't know, I'm just gonna put it in. Oh, I'll get the shirt wet. I'll put it in. We'll mix it around a little bit. Try to get the color nice and even. And we'll see how long it takes. When we're done, I do have some uh, Rit dye fixative, so we'll try to get it in that too to just lock in the color after we've done the dyeing part. And uh, let's head to the kitchen. Let's get started.
Okay, guys, it's been 10 minutes. Look at this color. Oh my gosh. Okay, note to self, cotton gauze takes dye immediately. I definitely could have used less dye. Um, I was hoping for something a little paler. Granted, this will be lighter when it's dry. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's uh, wet. It almost looks like, it's almost like Barbie pink. Kind of raspberry pink. Woohoo! Yeah, I definitely could have used a little less dye. Um, oh well, it's pretty awesome. And another thing that's amazing, I love how the stitching didn't take the dye. Isn't that great? The stitching's probably like polyester thread, I guess. So it didn't really dye. So it shows the pattern! So cool! And yeah, there's definitely no chance of the staining showing anymore, so <laughs> I think this will be great. So I am going to fill up the sink again with some more hot water and some fixative. Dump this guy in there, let him stir around in there for 20 minutes or so, and then launder him. I'll probably end up just washing it out in the sink. Let it dry and show you what it looks like. Oh my gosh. Whoa, look at this color. <laughs> okay, um, this shirt started taking dye immediately. Like as soon as I put it in, the light cotton gauze just <laughs> soaked up the dye. And ba bam, we got this almost like, I don't know. It's like getting close to Barbie pink, but it's like almost a raspberry pink. Whoa. And I love how this stitching stayed white. Isn't that awesome? I'm definitely gonna be sending this one on to my sister. I think this will be super cute on her. Can't wait to see her wear it. Yay! Well, I think this shirt is gonna be a great candidate for an upcycle project. A person in my neighborhood was giving this away and, oh man, it is a brand called Foundry. It is a young men's large tall. And of course we love the bigger sizes and especially the tall sizes because that means they tend to be longer. And young men's button up shirts sometimes tend to be more of a slim fit. So this shirt seems to be a little bit slimmer than you would expect from like a men's large, but it is a tall, so it's got a little extra length. Also, it's this kind of lightweight, cambry, cotton material, so should be a lot of fun to work with. Honestly, this shirt's got lots of potential. If you wanted to, you could just, you know, crop the sleeves, cuff them, make a camp shirt out of it. You crop the shirt if you wanted. You can make a tie front. Um, remove the collar if you wanted or not. So many good choices. But I'm actually thinking, can we make a skirt out of this? Now I've done some projects like this in the past, haven't done one for a little while. So let me show you what I'm thinking. Okay, what if we kind of, you know, cut off the sleeves and we'll have to taper the sides in a little bit. Cut off the sleeves and then cut off the shirt right about here and then use this as a skirt. We could do kind of just a rolled waistband, like use extra fabric, make it extra tall and then roll a tube of fabric up here to put elastic in to make the top waistband of the skirt or we may be able to use some sleeve fabric to make a separate waistband and then sew the skirt part to that waistband to make a skirt. We do have a few little tricky parts. We've got some pockets to deal with. Sometimes you can remove them. I feel like these are gonna stay and be really cute if we can work around them. So that means though, that makes it a little trickier. We gotta make, you know, move up our waistband instead of having it like here 
we have to have it up here to avoid those pockets. Um, I'm hoping that this is wide enough <laughs> here to be like fit around my hips. I gotta measure that. Then we also have a little issue back here with the top part of the shirt. I'm sorry. Help me out, people. What do you call this? Is this a yoke? Hmm. I don't know. But if we cut off, you know, the top of the shirt here, we could be kind of messing with this. So ideally, we would cut above it. One difficulty is if we try to make a, a rolled waistband just using the fabric here, we're going to have this bunchy seam that would then probably become part of that waistband tube, which, you know, could be a little bulky. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but I'm kind of thinking that maybe cutting off the skirt right about here and then doing a separate waistband, hopefully using some sleeve fabric, might be the ticket. I just noticed, though, one other complication. We've got this kind of patch on the side around the buttons of the shirt. So that's a little bit weird. It's not too bulky, but we're trying to cut a waistband. I don't know if I want that on there. Might be able to take that off. We'll see. Anyway, okay. Let's do a little pinning, measuring, and double check some stuff. Well, okay, after lots of fiddling and pinning and trying to measure and kind of, yeah, uh, I think I've got the shirt mostly lined up flat-ish. I was trying to kind of pin along some of the seams to make sure, say, like the shoulder seams were flat and the underarm seams were flat and everything was kind of lined up so that when I cut it, hopefully it'll be not too wonky. <laughs> Seems like every time, you know, I cut up a garment like this, it's really hard to get each side the same and, you know, make sure, oh, the back was lined up and the front was lined up and all that stuff. So let me show you. Let's zoom in a little bit and show you what I did. Okay, lots of pins. Lots of pins. So this little arc of pins going across the top here, that's showing where that back seam is. That cool, what I'm calling yoke back seam. Apologies if I'm wrong. And then I do have some pins in the sleeves. I think I might end up using a little bit of the sleeve fabric just to make sure that it's not too tight around my hips. I feel like if I cut the sleeves off, maybe a little too narrow up here. So I may end up using a little bit of sleeve, like you can see over here. That's probably going to get a little wonky. You can see my, my washable fabric pen lines there. I think I'm going to cut off a little bit of the underarm seam here and try to kind of carry up the side seam line up a little bit, then cut across avoiding that yoke seam on the back so we don't have to deal with that oop, there we go bulkiness and then i think i am gonna make a separate waistband with the sleeves i don't have to like if you wanted to make this a super super duper easy project 
you could make this line up here closer to the collar, you know, give yourself more space, and then just make a rolled waistband with this extra fabric up here. But I'm thinking since I have this button placket running down the middle, that I think the whole thing will look more intentional if I have a waistband inst uh, instead of just a rolled waistband. I don't know. Am I just making more work for myself? <sighs> Probably. Okay, time to do some cutting. Ooh, fingers crossed. I think I'm going to follow my purple pen line here and cut from here across, and then I'll fold the garment in half and try to kind of do this, fold it in half so that I can kind of get the same amount that I have over here, over here. Is that going to work? I don't know. Let's try it. Here we go. Hooray! We basically have the skirt of the skirt. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, we're going to check back with that skirt a little later. Let's check in with the rest of the fabric, which is mostly the sleeves. Now we're going to be using this to make our waistband. Woohoo! Hey, well, I got our seam ripper going, and thankfully I was able to remove... A little bit of this kind of patch on the sleeve here and that's going to give me I think a little more fabric slightly less bulky fabric to cut a strip out from this sleeve and then I'll do the same on the other one cutting a strip out of that one to make my waistband so I measured around like my hips and butt and tried to figure out how long I needed that waistband to be in order to fit over my hips and so I got that measurement. I'll try to make this waistband about that size so I can just pull this skirt on. Of course, I will then be putting elastic into this waistband as well, making it stretchy so that it can fit around my waist. So I think I'm using like one inch elastic for this, just playing around with it. So I'm gonna need at least the two inches, you know, this fabric's doubled, two inches to cover my elastic, plus, you know, half an inch on each side for seam allowance, so that's gonna make it at least three inches of fabric. I'm gonna add a little bit more as well, so I'll need at least a strip of three inch fabric, at least half my hip measurement from this guy. Hopefully I can cut out another one of similar size on the other sleeve. I could do a little bit of patching. You know, I could sew different pieces together to make a waistband if I needed to, but I think I'll have enough and then we'll be able to make a waistband and sew that to the skirt and add, 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 of course we have to sew up the sides of the skirt sew the skirt to the waistband 
yeah, it's all a process. But I think we're going to have enough fabric, and I think it's going to work. Go up, cycle project. Okay, I'm going to get out my rotary cutter, and let's get started. Well, we have a waistband and we have a skirt. We're looking at both of them on from the inside out, and you can tell we got some pins going on. So let's see what we're doing next. Okay, as to waistband, when I cut them out, one uh, gave me more fabric than the other. I was able to make one longer than the other, and I thought I had about the same amount of sleeve for each one, but not quite. So I did trim the longer waistband piece, but I also feel like I needed a little bit of that length. I'm kind of sad I didn't get it from the other piece. Not sure how that happened, but you can tell. The waistband is a little wibbly wobbly. One side is a little longer than the other, and the side seams of the waistband are not going to match perfectly with the side seams of the skirt, but I'm okay with that. It's going to be a little off. It'll be fine. Okay, you can tell I've got some buttons, or er, buttons, pff, I got some pins, going up that center placket because I'm going to stitch it closed at least part way down. I don't need it to function. Just a note. I may end up using my zipper foot to sew this closed because, let's see, where does, well, where's the gap? Okay, so here's the overlap. I would like to stitch just right down this seam line so it doesn't really show but it's really close to the button. And even if I unbutton it, it could like throw off my normal sewing machine foot. So I may use that skinnier zipper foot to just help me do that. Cool, okay. I do also need to sew the side seams closed because remember we did trim those down a little bit, but you might notice the edges don't totally match. I believe the back piece of the skirt, or sorry, the back piece of the shirt was a little bit wider than the front. And you know, sometimes you get that because sometimes on a dress shirt, there'll be a pleat in the back with some extra fabric to allow for extra shoulder movement. I didn't see one of those on this shirt, but remember that's, that seam we cut off going across the back shoulders, it might have actually gathered this back panel in a little bit. So there might be, there's a little extra fabric, I think, here than there is on the front. So anyway, just noticed that. It's a little weird. But I'm just going to trim off the extra and line up as best as I can. That'll be fine. Then I do need to stitch these closed. On both sides. Gonna do that over here as well. And I need to sew my waistband into a large donut. And once we do a bit of that, oof, there we go. Then I think we'll be able to talk about attaching the waistband to the skirt and getting a little elastic in there. Okay, I'm gonna finish pinning and do a little sewing.
Okay, well, we got those side seams sewn up. We got that center button placket sewn up. We got the waistband pieces sewn together. And I also did a zigzag stitch over the raw edges because this Cambry stuff frays like crazy. Okay, our next step is we're going to want to gather the skirt part just a little bit so that we can then sew it to the waistband. Woo! Let's see if you can see it. Oh, gosh, I don't know if you can see this. I did two lines, really big stitches across the front of the skirt, and then I did two more across the back. And I'm going to just use those to gather, right? Going to pull on the bottom thread, which should then gather the threads up. Let's switch to time lapse, and I'll get started. Okay, you guys, I have gathered the skirt a little bit. Turns out I don't need to gather it all that much because the waistband is not all that much smaller than the skirt. Would have been nice if I'd had a lot of fabric, could gather it and think that would be cute. But we don't have it. So I've gathered it a little bit, and you can also possibly tell that I have ironed under the seam allowance um, one part of the waistband. I'll need that a little later. My plan is to, and I'm kind of thinking this through as I go. I know there are a lot of ways you could do this. Hopefully I'm not choosing the least efficient one. We'll see. I think what I'm going to do is pin one edge of the waistband to the skirt, right sides together. And then I'll be able to fold over the waistband and slip stitch the back of the waistband into the inside of the skirt. Sounds a little crazy. Uh, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna be pinning the non-ironed edge, so not, not this lovely little bit here, but um, non-ironed edge to this edge. So let's get our right sides together before I, before I confuse myself. There we go. All right. So I'm kind of matching up the side seams, kind of. Of course, my waistband side seam is off a little bit from the actual side seam of my skirt. So that's not a perfect match. Hopefully that's okie dokie. That's pretty good. Oops, that's good. Make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Just a note, 
I realized it would have been really helpful if I'd figured out what the center of my waistband was and the center of the back. Because then I could match up sides and then middles. Hmm. Oops. Okay, let's figure out the center of the center waistband. Okay. Just line up the edges. Okay, so this is about the center. Cool. Let's kind of match that up with. Pocket. Awesome. Yeah, if I had measured the back panel of the skirt, figured out its middle point, that would have been helpful too. Let's see if I can fudge it. Where is the middle? Just judging from the back things. I know I've gathered it though, but it's not going to be perfect. Let's try. Okay, roughly, roughly there. Let's find the middle of the back waistband. Why do I always remember this part at the wrong time? Mm hmm. Oops. Oops, doops. Right about there. Awesome. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Let's kind of match up the middle of the back to kind of the middle of the thing. And pin it. Okay, cool. Well, now I can kind of try to distribute my gathered fabric around. Looks like I may be able to cinch it in just a tiny little bit over here. Let's see. Let's cinch as we go a little bit. Okay. That looks like that would match pretty good. How about over here? Maybe a little bit of cinch. Just a little cinch and pinch. What? Okay, I think that was too much. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm gonna have to switch to time lapse and do some pinning and cinching and fiddling and uh, get this on here. Here we go. Okay, well, after much ado, I finally got the pinning done. Well, gathering and pinning. And got the stitching done for the front side of the waistband. So then, let's turn things inside out so you can see what on earth I'm doing. Okay, so I've got this waistband on here, Coolio. So my plan is to take this nicely ironed edge, pin it down, and do a whole bunch of little pinning, and then I'll leave a little gap so that then this tube can be where my elastic goes. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just pin all the way around here, I think. I will end up, I will just stitch this by hand. Sorry, that's kind of sloppy, but I'll just do little stitches. 
not all, all around the edge, cut little whip stitches that hopefully you don't see really from the front. Just uh, stitching down this ironed edge. I'm kind of lining it up to the stitching. I got the pinning all done. I left some uh, double pins <laughs> over here to remind me to leave a little gap. Of course, I've got my thread ready to go. Do a little hand stitching. But once I have stitched, you know, little stitches all the way around, except for that little gap, then I can bring in my elastic. Just going to use my little safety pin. Actually, it's a big safety pin. You use the safety pin to help push the elastic into the tube and work it along on the inside. And then, of course, I'll need to try the skirt on before I cut off the elastic and, you know, just try to get it comfortable. Then I'll sew the ends of the elastic closed, close up that little gap in the waistband, and you know, we're going to have a skirt. Woo! Okay, so I have a little more work to do. We're pretty close. But I'm going to dive in and get started. While I'm doing that, it's the perfect time for you to give this video a thumbs up. And consider subscribing for more fun stuff from Partners in Craft. We got all sorts of good summer plans planned. So hope you stick around for more fun things. And hope you try a little upcycling of your own could be fun. You never know what you could create. Okay, I'll get to stitching and I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. <laughs> 